Hi, I'm Daniel, one of the summer scholars in the Mayan lab, and today I'll be presenting my work on Drug Monisome ML, a platform to predict drugs for diseases. Drug discovery is extremely expensive and time intensive, so finding ways to facilitate the drug discovery process is important. One fruitful strategy has been drug repurposing, which tries to find novel indications for existing drugs. Because existing drugs have already been optimized for safety and delivery, this approach can drastically cut both the costs and the time needed for approval. In fact, one third of drug approvals have been the result of repurposing, making up 25% of the annual revenue for the pharmaceutical industry. Additionally, for time-sensitive problems such as the present SARS pandemic, developing a drug from scratch, which can take over a decade, is simply not an option. So drug repurposing is the main approach that we could use for identifying therapeutics to treat COVID-19. On the other hand, being able to computationally predict indications for small molecules can also help to identify novel drugs from existing libraries of compounds, saving time and money. To make these predictions, we can make use of the wealth of information that has already been collected for existing small molecules. In the lab, Eric has integrated a variety of resources to create the Drug Monisome database. This database labels each of tens of thousands of drugs by its associations with different genes, protein targets, induced gene expression profiles, chemical features, side effects, and other attributes. Using this data, it's possible to start to explore the similarities between different drugs and to ask what features make a drug a more promising therapeutic for particular diseases. Eric has already started to do this by constructing the sets of drugs that share each attribute. Using these drug sets, he can perform enrichment analysis to highlight common genes, pathways, and other features that are enriched in any group of drugs. My goal with Drug Monisome ML was to build a machine learning platform on the Drug Monisome datasets that could be used to predict drugs for treating diseases. In the first part of this presentation, I'll describe the Drug Monisome ML tool. And in the second part, I'll show a case study where Drug Monisome ML was used to prioritize repurposing candidates for the treatment of COVID-19. The Drug Monisome ML tool is built as an app or web application for easy use by the research community. As Nicole introduced earlier, Apiters are a catalog of bioinformatic tools being developed in the Mayan lab. Apiter notebooks allow users to build modular Jupyter notebook pipelines for various analyses through a simple input form. When submitted, a Jupyter notebook is generated and executed, providing options for download and for their customization. In the case of Drug Monisome ML, the input form has three sections corresponding to each part of Drug Monisome ML. Input dataset selection, target label selection, and settings for the machine learning pipeline. I'll go through the details of each part in the following slides. The first step of Drug Monisome ML is to select input features, which are used as the basis of prediction. The Apiter provides many features to choose from, including phenotypic data and drug attributes taken from Drug Monisome. The phenotypic data sets taken from public repositories and previously used in the lab to predict drug side effects were generated by high-throughput experiments in which cells were treated with each of tens of thousands of compounds, and the cellular response was measured. L1000 datasets measure the expression of 978 landmark genes after perturbation, whereas the cell painting datasets measure a variety of morphological features after staining cells with several dyes and imaging. The gene expression signatures have also been evaluated for enrichment of various gene ontology terms. Besides the phenotypic datasets, the Drug Monisome database can be harnessed to provide additional small molecule attributes, including chemical fingerprints, such as max keys, known drug targets, indications, and pathways, known side effects, and associated genes from literature. The selected datasets are then joined together to generate a rich feature vector for each compound. The next step of the Drug Monisome ML Apiter is to select the target label that should be predicted. This can be a custom list of drugs or any of the small molecule attributes described by one of the drug monisome datasets. Depending on what attribute is chosen, drug monisome ML could be adapted to predict drug indications, drug targets, side effects, or even hits from a drug screen, as in our case study. 
These labels are then used as a binary vector for classification. The last step of the Appiter input form is to customize the machine learning platform that should be used. The form provides a variety of scikit-learn options for each step of the pipeline, including data normalization, dimensionality reduction, feature selection, strategies for cross-validation, the classification algorithm to use, and evaluation metrics to report. Finally, after the user submits the Appiter form, a Jupyter notebook is produced that downloads the necessary data to build the input matrix and train the machine learning model. The trained model can then be used to classify additional compounds and suggest important input features or mislabeled compounds. The entire analysis is produced as a highly readable report in the Jupyter Notebook, with indications of model performance and interactive visualizations of the drug feature space. Full results, including drug predictions and the relative importance of different features, can easily be downloaded as spreadsheets. To demonstrate how drug monisome ML could be used in practice, I'll now show a case study where the Appiter was used to suggest drug repurposing candidates for the treatment of COVID-19. In the ongoing battle against COVID-19, identifying effective therapeutics that can alleviate SARS-CoV-2 infection is important in a time when we don't have an available vaccine or antivirals specific to coronaviruses. It's already been shown that the transcriptional response of cells to SARS-CoV-2 can be used to predict promising candidates for repurposing. Thus, we might expect that drug monisome ML could successfully be applied to this problem as well. Drug monisome ML has the added advantage that it can make use of additional drug attributes that could also be helpful for making predictions. To date, six high-throughput drug screens have been conducted to identify drugs that inhibit SARS-CoV-2 infection in cultured cell lines. Cumulatively, these have identified 195 compounds that showed anti-SARS-CoV-2 activity. However, each study used different methods, and the overlap between different studies is low. The hits from these drug screens are available at the COVID-19 Drug and Gene Set Library, a collection of drug and gene sets related to COVID-19 research, recently published by the Mayan Lab. In the paper, which was just released as a pre-proof, we show how these drug sets can be used for machine learning applications. We now show a similar analysis with drug monisome ML, trying to prioritize the known hits as well as identify other candidates that may have similar activity, but were missed by the screens. I set up drug monisome ML to use two gene expression-based datasets, the linked gene expression signatures for 978 landmark genes and the corresponding enrichment of over 4,000 gene ontology terms. The input dataset consisted of over 20,000 compounds and 5,400 features per compound. The target labels were specified as a list of hits taken from the six independent drug screens. I then chose a random forest classifier as the predictive model. The receiver operating characteristic curve is shown on the right for each of five cross-validation splits, repeated five times. The average area under the curve is significantly greater than 0.5, the expected performance of a random classifier, indicating that the classifier is learning some meaningful relationship between the input data sets and the target labels. I could then use the model to predict additional drugs that were similar to the already known hits and may also be promising candidates. Here is a table of the compounds with the highest average validation set prediction, grouped by their similarity in the input feature space. Some were already known hits from the six studies and others were not. I'll be exploring these predictions further in the upcoming slides. To visualize the predictions, the drug monisome ML appiter performs a UMAP dimensionality reduction on the original input data set and makes an interactive plot as shown here. Each compound is a point on the plot where the color and size of the marker correspond to the model's cross-validation prediction for each compound and its significance. Additionally, the already known hits are marked by an X. In the UMAP plot, similar compounds should cluster together. We can then see that many of the drugs with the highest predictions are in this region at the bottom left, so we can zoom in to take a closer look. Within this region, we can see two more areas with higher predicted probability, and in the notebook, 
We can see the identity of each compound simply by hovering with our cursor. In the highly predicted cluster at the top, we identify many drugs that are indicated as cardiac glycosides. These are indicated in italics. These drugs are commonly used to treat cardiac arrhythmias by acting on the sodium-potassium ATPase pump. The highly predicted drugs digoxin and wabayan have since been confirmed to have potent antiviral activity against SARS-CoV-2 in further in vitro studies. Additionally, linatocyte C, digitoxygenin, and emetine have been shown to be active against the MERS coronavirus. The antibiotic anisomycin was also implicated in an additional screen for anti-SARS-CoV-2 activity. These results suggest that drug monizom ML makes plausible predictions for anti-SARS-CoV-2 candidate compounds. The second region of highly predicted drugs contains drugs that act through pathways different from the cardiac glycosides in the first region. While I won't detail all of these drugs now, it's worth noting that many of them affect mitochondrial or ER-related processes, increasing cytosolic calcium levels or dysregulating cytochrome C release by inhibiting membrane channels or by interfering with the lipid bilayer. These pathways reflect important aspects of SARS-CoV-2 replication, which relies heavily on membrane-related processes. In conclusion, our SARS-CoV-2 case study demonstrates the ability of drug monizom ML to suggest novel therapeutic candidates that could inhibit SARS-CoV-2 infection. Some of these candidates were validated in additional studies not used in the drug monizom ML pipeline. Additionally, even candidates that may not have therapeutic value could highlight important aspects of viral biology, as suggested by the two clusters of highly predicted drugs. Overall, drug monizom ML is a flexible platform for predicting novel indications for compounds. By drawing upon a large number of available data sets, it allows users to quickly build custom machine learning pipelines for a variety of predictive tasks, including not only novel drug indications, but also attributes such as drug targets, side effects, and more. Lastly, I'd like to thank all the members of the Mayan Lab for their support, particularly Avi for his mentorship, Sherry for guiding the summer scholars through this program, Daniel for help getting the aperitors up and running, Eric for helping me use the Drugmanizum datasets, and all the other summer scholars for the inspiration I found from hearing about their own projects. Thanks for listening.